If you look at Tokyo on a map, you'll see it's like a giant koi pond. Great for koi fish, not humans though. So the city built a gigantic flood tunnel that would control flooding and save countless lives and billions of dollars in damages. The only issue is that it may not be enough. Climate change changed the rules, and this system won't be able to stop future severe floods. So let's discuss how Japan is trying to outpace climate change in today's episode of Built Up. We all know Tokyo is famous for its earthquakes, but what the media doesn't talk about often are the floods. If you look at a map of Tokyo, you'll notice that the city is like a bathtub. It's built on a floodplain and the eastern district sits below sea level. The slightest rise in sea level could be catastrophic for the city. For hundreds of years, Tokyo has tried and most often failed to control major floods. Some of the earliest recorded floods go all the way back to the 1600s. This problem persists to this day, with the latter part of the 20th century marking a serious problem for Japan. But as time goes on, things will only get worse. Why? Well, let's put it this way. When you have a floodplain that sits right at, or worse, below sea level, and you continue putting gigantic concrete and steel skyscrapers on top of it, what do you think that plane will do? Will it rise higher to the top, or will it sink even further down, as less and less natural ground is there to prevent it? In a nutshell, the massive urbanization of Tokyo, followed by an economic boom, has only made this problem worse. For example, in 1991, there was a massive typhoon that hit Japan, causing billions upon billions of dollars in damages and taking lives during the floods. Right then and there, Tokyo knew they had to develop a solution to help manage the city's flooding problem. The name of that solution was the Tokyo Flood Tunnels Project. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you liked the video so far. When engineers made the proposition to build the Tokyo Flood Tunnels, TFT, it was a mega project unlike any other, both in terms of engineering and investment. But considering that the benefits outweighed the challenges, the country decided to build the system anyway. The simple goal was this, build a system of reservoirs that would take the excess water from typhoons and floods and stop the flooding of valuable city infrastructure, thus preventing billions of yen in damages. Tokyo's metropolitan area outer underground discharge channel isn't just one tunnel, it's a network. To give you a rough estimate of just how gigantic this system is, the main reservoir is the size of two football fields. Because of its size, the reservoir can hold 670,000 tons of water, which is roughly the same amount of water 268 Olympic-sized swimming pools would hold. And there are five of these silos throughout the city, each one connected through a network of tunnels measuring four miles in length. The five silos then connect to a gigantic concrete tank measuring 580 feet by 260 feet. And this is not just an ordinary anti-flood system where water flows freely from one tank to another. We have to remember this is a highly sophisticated anti-flooding system with a pressure-adjusting water tank. Just imagine how strong a silo would need to be to withstand the pressure of thousands upon thousands of tons of water pouring into it. That's the beauty of the TFT. The tunnel system is another impressive feat of engineering because they're built 165 feet underground and they're practically big enough to fit a commercial aircraft. But the heart of the system is the four turbines at the top that can pump 200 tons of water every second straight into the Edogawa River. This helps the system control the flow of water without causing overflow to the river, even during terrifying floods. If you were to hook these turbines to an Olympic swimming pool, they would empty the water in around three seconds. So now, with all of the major parts covered, let's see how the system works during a flood. Let's say a typhoon hits Tokyo and the rivers begin to overflow. This water is diverted into the underground tunnels thanks to the five silos. They channel the water away from Tokyo Street, where they can damage the buildings, wreak havoc on the population and lead it deep beneath the earth. From the silos, the water freely flows into the tunnels and collects inside the main reservoir, which is known as the cathedral. The reservoir is so large that it has to be held up by 59 551-ton pillars that measure 60 feet in height. 
The cathedral reservoir is so large that the interior has its own microclimate. In the summer, the interior is cooler than the outside air, and in the winter, it stays warm. Tourists who go to visit the cathedral reservoir say this is like a religious experience, seeing the dim interior punctuated by spears of natural light from apertures in the ceiling. It's truly breathtaking, but it's actually built hundreds of feet beneath Tokyo. The construction of the project began in 1992, and by the time it was completed in 2006, it cost the Japanese government an astonishing 230 billion yen, or $1.6 billion. So far, it saved 150 billion yen in damages, but there's another problem engineers didn't account for. In the early morning of August 30th, 2024, north of Tokyo, a giant chamber from the underground flood tunnels known as the Cathedral started to overfill with water. CCTV footage shows gushing torrents of water flooding the Cathedral after Typhoon Shanshan in the southwest of Japan. Even though this happened 370 miles away, it still caused a lot of problems for Tokyo. Thankfully, the Cathedral and the network of tunnels helped mitigate the flooding effects. But as floods get worse and worse, experts fear this flooding system will not be enough. Professor Saita Imori from the University of Tokyo said, As the temperature rises, the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere increases, resulting in relatively larger quantities of rainfall. We anticipate that previously unseen amounts of rain will fall as the temperature rises in the future. Now, can you imagine a $1.6 billion mega project being obsolete less than 20 years after its construction? Sure, the project managed to save about 150 billion yen in damages so far, but considering the cost of the project was close to 230 billion yen, it still has a long way to go before breaking even. And now, the tunnels, pillars, silos and pool are not enough. Just during Typhoon Chan Chan, the system captured enough water to fill up the Tokyo Dome baseball stadium four times. This water was collected and safely released into the Edogawa River. But experts are saying this will only get worse. Compared to years past, there's a tendency for a great deal of rain to come down all at once in what we call gorilla downpours. If this facility didn't exist, the water levels of the main Nakagawa River and its tributaries could rise much higher, leading to flooding of homes and even deaths, said Land Ministry official Yoshio Miyazaki. And with all of this effort, 4,000 homes still got flooded. That forced Tokyo officials to come up with a better system. Today, Japan is on a mission. The government will spend 37.3 billion yen to construct better water drainage systems to improve the water drainage in the region. But this is outside of Tokyo. The capital city itself is taking another major expansion project that is supposed to take the overflow from the two nearby rivers, Shirako and Kanda. Why are they doing this? Well, because the current Tokyo sewer network is designed to stand about 3 inches of rainfall per hour. However, since there were recent instances where rainfall exceeded 4 inches of rainfall an hour, experts started to worry. The project is expected to be finished by 2027 and take the water overflow from the rivers through a vast expanse of tunnels 8 miles underground before taking it to Tokyo Bay. This expansion will be part of Tokyo's climate preparedness plan. Now, the only question is, will they be able to build the new expansion before another major flood hits Tokyo and the surrounding area? So, do you think Tokyo will build a better flood system before climate change causes another massive flood? Tell us in the comment section below. Now, here's another video mega project enthusiasts enjoyed watching. Bye for now.